I'm uh, presenting on behalf of the, the, the small but very active uh, team on working on forest and or forest for food and forest and nutrition in C4. And uh, <coughs> I'm not going to repeat, but it's fundamentally what, what our colleague Simon has said, that's fundamentally the importance of forest and food for, for nutrition, which is something that we keep hammering in the context of the, of the CGIAR because it's something that is not very well known. I mean, so that one billion more people relying on forest products for nutrition and income. Uh, one fifth of the income derived from the environment. Uh, bushmeat, it's 30 to 50 percent of the protein of many rural communities. Uh, 80 percent of the world population rely on biodiversity for primary health care. So it's 40 percent of the global food production comes from diverse, more older agricultural system with trees inside. There is a long tradition of managing forests for food, and also that's something that is a bit overlooked. Also, is the role of forests in sustaining agriculture. Through ecosystem service provision. So what, what we work, uh, the work in C4, it started uh, historically, although in C4 is not at all, in the research on NTFP, non tribal forest products. Uh, we have several uh, projects ongoing, and we have an emerging team in house uh, that is starting, I and mean, it's something that is getting traction since uh, four or five years now. Uh, and the hypothesis is that tree and forest are important for nutrition or dietary quality and diversity and it's really uh, looking at the issue of food security and nutrition uh, through the nutritious NTFP to farming mosaic that promote more diverse diets uh, through agroforestry and food production uh, ecosystem services availability of fuel wood as I say that's something which is also often forgotten you, you may have all the food you want if you don't have something to cook it you are going to eat it raw uh, so the evidence there are several papers that have been published uh, uh, showing the evidence of the importance of forest and food, uh, forest for food and nutrition. Uh, and, and then uh, we had a study that was run by Amy about looking at the DHS. The DHS is some sort of a large, large health survey that are <coughs> conducted in many countries. Uh, and in this survey, they look at the percentage of recovery. And nobody had the idea. They, they look at various uh, health status, and nobody had the idea of coupling that with the, the forest cover and see if, if, if there is, a, if, is there an impact on forest cover in terms of health. And uh, so they, they use a sample of about 93,000 children in 21 countries. Uh, and, and the result is that there is a very significant relationship positive between percentage of tree cover and dietary diversity. We don't say that it's a correlation, but it's a very strong relationship. And the fruit and vegetable consumption increase and then decrease when the tree cover reach 45 percent. So there is a peak in this curve, uh, but they didn't find any statistically significant relationship between tree cover and the animal source foods. So based on that, I mean, sort of the main issue was oh, but when we don't really know which tree they are, I mean, sort of this is just a tree cover. So they, they did uh, something. Uh, bit using this uh, funding from the FID, uh, se several more detailed studies uh, in various countries, and, and the first one that is almost completed is the one on, on uh, Indonesia. Uh, and Indonesia is quite interesting because using the DHS uh, survey in Indonesia, uh, you find that the children in area with more natural forest consume animal source food more frequently. Children living in area with more timber plantation have a more diverse diet that children living in an area with agricultural plantation. So if you are in a timber plantation of Acacia Manjum, you have a more diverse diet than if you are in a oil palm plantation. And the, the, the sort of the first hypothesis for that is that, in fact, when you have oil palm plantation, it's generally migration. It, it's, it, it, you know, it's generally people on the spot and they are not doing the same thing that people that have been migrating uh, for the timber plantation. But this is really a preliminary, but this is the, the thing that we are finding. And, and the fact also that the children living in areas with more land area in Sweden agriculture or agroforestry have the most micronutrient rich diet. So the most, more diverse your environment, the more likely diverse is your diet. Uh, so this result shows that there is there, there are very interesting relationships between tree cover, the quality of tree cover and, and, and food security and nutrition, but the DHS data are not that good. The GIS data don't tell us the kind of tree. 
The data can ex can't explain why children in area with more tree have more diverse diet. So we are doing further studies, and they are doing studies in five countries, and we hope to have results quite soon. So that's going to be quite interesting. And, and some of the studies are carried out in the area of the Sentinel landscape, so it's something that we do. Uh, then more uh, looking at the other aspect, we are doing a systematic review on the forest sustaining agriculture, and uh, uh, shows that all study uh, conducted in agroforestry system, 79% study showed a positive effect of the tree presence uh, for nutrient cycling, and for pollination, 87% of the studies showed a positive positive effect of nearby forest uh, on pollination. So this is also something very important in the context of this whole issue of the importance of pollination ecosystem services and the need to keep forests, if you want to keep these ecosystem services, to produce more food. Uh, then, I go fast, that's a sort of publication. Uh, Influence to the agenda, that, that was the conference that Simone was talking about. And then you see that we have had a huge influence, and you can see the C4 is there. <laughs> <laughs> so. But we were there and we managed to And then really looking at this new approach that integrating agriculture and natural resource management and the landscape scale. And I guess that's really what, what we try to do and uh, what uh, at FTE and uh, many other play on this system. And, and this, this is the sort of the new uh, uh, jargon and buzzword you heard about new agriculture is needed, agroecological approach, integrated management of biodiversity for food and agriculture. Uh, we need to develop a shared agenda, integrated landscape approach are key to the future we want. And that's all. Thank you.